What's up everyone, April Dunham here. In this quick tip video, I'm going to share with you a tip for how you can dynamically rearrange items in a Power Apps gallery. If you need to do something in your app like I'm showing right here where you're building out, say, an agenda and you need to rearrange the order in which things happen, this is a great use case for that. Stay tuned and I'll show you how it's done. This particular need came out of a project that I was working on where we wanted to be able to build out a agenda for a training course. So you would have something like what we're seeing here. On the left, you'll have a list of different trainings or sessions that you can give. And then you would add those into the agenda. And then once they're added, you might want to rearrange them so that you can enforce an order that these sessions should be given or classes be taken. So that's why we have these arrows on the secondary gallery where we can move up or down and rearrange the order of the items on how it shows. Uh, then at this point, once you rearrange the items, you could do something like produce a PDF of this agenda in this order or send an email, something like that. So it's just one use case for this, but as you can see, there could be multiple use cases where it might be helpful to be able to rearrange the items in the gallery dynamically like this. So with that in mind, let's take a look and see how this is done. You'll learn a few things from this. Uh, one, how to work with collections and how to dynamically add items to collections. So the first step, if we expand out this screen, you'll see that we have a gallery called Gallery Trainings on the left. And this is just pointing to a SharePoint list called Training. And in its items property, we do have some filtering going on so I can filter the training options based off of a category that I select here in this third gallery. That's all that we're doing here is we're checking to see what the selected value is. And if it's all, then we'll just show all training. But if it's not, only show the trainings that match the category we have selected. So nothing too crazy going on in that gallery. But what is happening when we select one of the items, you notice when I click this arrow, an item was dynamically being added to this other gallery on the right, that's called gallery agenda. So that is done by if we take a look at this arrow in its on select property, you see that we are using the collect function. The collect function allows us to write objects out to a collection in Power Apps so that we can store and use that information locally within Power Apps. So we're collecting an item into the agenda collection. And you see I'm mapping several properties. So I'm just building out these properties and mapping to the selected item in the gallery. So I have a title, length, instructor, so on and so forth. And I'm just mapping that. Now the only thing from this screen that we really need to be aware of that makes this work is this order column. This is something that I am creating. And this is what will determine and allow us to dynamically rearrange these. So this order column is going to be our key to know where to surface the items up and in what order. So you'll see that I am using a function called last. So I'm getting the last item in this agenda collection. I'm getting its order property and I'm adding one to it so that this will help me to define the order. Then if we look at our gallery agenda and its items property, you'll see that we are using the sort by columns function, which allows us to sort a data source. We're pointing that to our agenda collection. We're sorting on the order field and sorting ascending. So it goes from one all the way down. That piece is pretty standard. Now let's take a look at this gallery agenda. In here, I just have a couple labels where I'm storing the title and the length and who taught the course. And what I've did is within the gallery, I went in and added three different icons in this case. I've added the up, the down, and I've also added a trash can icon so I can remove an item from this collection. So if we look at the up arrow and take a look at its on select property, first thing that you'll see that we're doing is we're utilizing a context variable to get the previous record. 
So since we are clicking an up arrow, that means we want to replace the previous item with the item that we have selected. So to get that, we'll use a lookup function, point it to our agenda collection, and we'll test on the order field. We'll say where order equals this item.order, so the currently selected item in the gallery, minus one. So that will allow us to get the previous record. Now that we have that in a context variable, we can use that to update our collection items. And we're going to do that in two different calls. In the first update, you'll see that we're pointing it to our agenda collection, and we're going to tell it to update the previous record. So we'll just point that to the previous record context variable record object that we just created. And then we'll map all of those fields to the previous record value information accordingly. But you'll see the only change that we're doing is on that order field. We are pointing that to this item.order. So essentially we're saying update the collection item, keep everything else the same except now the order for the previous record should be the order of the current record that I'm on. So we're swapping them. And then in that next update function, we're updating the current item that we have selected in the collection by using the this item shortcut, mapping all the properties with the this item. And then the only difference here is on the order field, we are saying make the order the previous records order. So as you can imagine, the down arrow formula is going to be very similar to this. If we take a look at that. The only difference is we're creating a context variable called next record. So since we're going down, we want to replace the record below in the order. So we're going to do on our lookup a plus instead of a minus. So get the collection item where the order is one greater than the current selected item. Then we'll update that next record item in our collection, replace the order with the current items order, and then we'll update our current item in the agenda and replace its order with the next record's order. Just to see this working again, I've went in and I've added a label so that you can see that order field being outputted. So you can see now I've just added in four different agenda items and it's in ascending order from one to four. So now if I decide I need to change this up, like maybe the first thing I want people to know is an intro to Power Automate. So I can click the up arrow here. You see, as soon as I do that, it's replaced. So since this gallery is being sorted by the order, it's updated automatically. Now intro to Power Automate is number one in the list. And I can keep doing this so I can go swap Power Apps up. So that gets taken into the number two place. And then I can move SPX development down so that Teams is third and SPXF is fourth. In case you haven't worked with removing items from a gallery, I'll go ahead and show you that as well. That's this trash can icon that I have here within my gallery. And that's a really simple formula. You just type in remove, point it to your collection, and then you can use the this item property to get the current item that you've selected and it will remove that. Obviously, you could extend this if you're worried about people accidentally removing things. You could use, say, a dialog box, which I do have a video on that I'll drop in the, the notes here, to um, have a confirmation box pop up saying, are you sure you want to delete this um, and not remove it until they confirm that. And then uh, just a few other things that you might want to do to um, kind of error-proof this. So you see that... For example, the first item here is intro to pair automate with an ID of one. And I still have the up arrow, even though I can't really move it up anymore, right? So if I click that, you see it actually causes a blip um, with the ID to fall out because there's nothing less than one. So one thing that you can do, like I said, to error proof that is add in an additional condition on the up arrow. So what you can do here is I would probably just disable that icon if it's the first item in the gallery. So if you click on the icon itself and go to the display mode, that allows you to determine is this item clickable or not. So right now it's edit, so that means that we can click it, but you'll see there's a mode called disabled. So we can do a formula here 
and we can say if this item dot order equals one, then we want display mode to be disabled. Otherwise, display mode can be edit. So now I've kind of already messed up my gallery. Let's just clear this out and let's start fresh. So I, there's my first one. We have three items in here, right? So now if I click the up, that's not clickable on this one because that order number is one. But if I click up here, I can remove that and move that up. So it's not letting me click it if it's the first one in the gallery. For error proofing our down arrow, that's a tiny bit more tricky. Uh, we can essentially copy that same formula and go to its display mode property. But instead of just hard coding where this item order equals one, we have to do a little bit of additional formula to find out what the last record is. So we can use the last function and then we can do sort by columns again and sort our agenda collection by order ascending so that we can make sure it's in the right order. And then just use the last and then do a dot order after that to get the highest number item in that collection. So just to prove that this works, I can't go down on number three because there's nothing below it, but I can on number one and number two. So definitely build in that error proofing if you're doing this reordering approach. I'd be really interested to hear what use cases that you find for this pattern that I just showed you. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.